Hello, so this is a video that was suggested by Demats, if I'm pronouncing his name right, apologies if I'm not, but it's quite a good idea for a video. And he said, could I cover the pros and cons of like air blowers, or sort of, you know, filter blowers, powered blowers, whatever you want to call them. Now, this is a DIY one I made because I didn't want to pay a load of money for an official one. But how these work is you have a filter on them, or more than one filter. You have a battery unit with um, essentially an air compressor in it, or a fan. Um, and then you have a hose, and how these work is you flick them on, air is pulled through the filter, and air is blown out of the hose. So you might be thinking, what's the absolute point in all this stuff when you could just simply have a filter on a mask? Well, there's a couple of very big advantages to these and lots of disadvantages, so let's list them. So when you normally use a respirator um, with a filter on it, it uses a thing called negative pressure. And how that works is the mask pulls tight to your face to make an airtight seal because you've done the straps up and because there's only one set of valves for the air to come in and out of, basically, or you could have multiple filters and whatever on different valves. The idea is the air is following the path of least resistance, which means if the mask is completely tight to your face, the path of least resistance is going through the filter and then out the exhale valve. Um, however, that means if the mask doesn't quite fit to your face, uh, properly, you know, or you've got some stubble or something blocking the mask. What happens is the path of least resistance then isn't through the filter, it's wherever the gap is in the mask and it compromises the seal. Meaning that if you're in a hazardous environment it could kill you or injure you, because obviously the mask is not working as intended. The air isn't being filtered, it's just going straight into the mask because um, it's following the path of least resistance. Now, positive pressure is the opposite. If you have more pressure inside the mask than outside the mask, contaminants can't get in. And how this works is either with one of these, or with um, like an oxygen tank or an air tank, um, the stuff going into the mask um, is obviously higher pressure. So what happens is if there's a gap, the air inside the mask is actually forcing itself out. So it's both going out the exhale valve when you exhale, but it's also just constantly flowing out of any little gaps in the mask, provided the pressure inside the mask is more than the pressure outside. So that means contaminants can't get in that way, which is a really big advantage. So, a system like this means that you could actually have a mask that isn't done up too tightly, so it would be a lot more comfortable, and it would actually offer you a better level of protection. The reason being that there's no risk of compromising the seal of the mask if there's a little gap somewhere. So, that's why these systems are quite good. However, there's disadvantages to these, obviously, that this whole unit is bulky and it uh, weighs a lot more. Now, obviously, some of the proper made one by companies are far more compact than this. You wouldn't have this kind of bit of pipe between the filter and the blower unit. You just have a blower unit with a filter screwed flush into it and then the hose or whatever else. But, you know, there is going to be more weight to it, um, which is the thing. More weight and bulk, especially if you compare just to putting a filter directly on the mask, there is always going to be more weight and bulk. There's no way of getting around that. Um, so that is one of the big disadvantages of it. Obviously, if it runs on batteries, the batteries could run out. Now, in theory, a system like this, even if the batteries ran out, you could still breathe through it a bit more laboured than normal, but you could still breathe through the filter if the filter hadn't expired. So it doesn't mean that you're going to suffocate when the filter cuts out. However, if you're relying on it to make a positive pressure seal, and then um, the unit cuts out, you're suddenly in a negative pressure scenario, um, which obviously risks compromising the efficiency of the mask or, you know, your life in potential some situations. Now, another advantage I can think of is you could have a mask that's done up very loosely around your neck, and I've seen some Israeli masks are like this now. They're almost like clear plastic valves of exhale, um, clear plastic bags, sorry, of exhale valves on. So you'd connect the um, thing to the bag, um, sort of maybe at the neck or the side somewhere, um, and then it ties up loosely around your neck, and um, then you've got the valves that, you know, in the thing, and what happens is you can wear glasses and whatever under it, um, and it creates a positive pressure seal with just a bit of air seeping out around your neck, um, which means that you've not got the claustrophobia of having a mask on if you're not, you know, comfortable wearing a mask. And, like I said, you can wear glasses and things like that under it without compromising the seal, because, a, you know, a little gap at the neck isn't going to cause a problem. So, I think that mostly sums it up. Hopefully it's, um, you know, answered it for you. Now, obviously, if you were going to go with a positive pressure system, I think having an air tank would always be better than a filter blower. The reason being that, 
you know how much air is left in your air tank if you've got a visible sort of valve or pressure gauge. Um, and that means that you could actually use the mask in a zero oxygen environment or one where there's contaminants the filter can't, you know, filter out. The problem with a system like this is um, that obviously you can only use it where a regular filter would work. Although it's making it positive pressure, it's not going to provide you with any oxygen. If there's no oxygen in the air or breathable air, um, a fan simply blowing isn't going to create air. Um, so, there are the pros and cons. Hopefully that's answered you, Demats, if you're interested in that. Um, but yeah, these are overall good for certain people. I imagine they're good for people working in places all day using a mask because it means that they can have a looser fitting mask and it gives them a better level of protection as long as they're always somewhere where they can get fresh batteries and things like that. However, I think for a regular person, like for prepping purposes or whatever, these aren't very useful. You know, spe specifically because the batteries are going to be a factor in it and, you know, it's adding more weight and bulk to something you're probably not going to need. So for specialised industries where these are um, used, I think they'd be very good for that. For your average person, though, I think um, you're better off just sticking with a filter on the mask itself.